Everyone, welcome to this edition of Eyewitness News Extra Time. I'm Bill Ritter. We're going to get to those stories in just a moment, but we're going to begin right now with the overturned conviction of movie mogul. Make that former movie mogul, Harvey Weinstein. The appeals court ordering a new trial for the once powerful Hollywood producer whose downfall drove the Me Too movement into being. The court ruled Weinstein did not get a fair trial. Back in 2020, when he was convicted of rape and criminal sex acts and sentenced to 23 years in prison. From the courthouse in Lower Manhattan, here's Eyewitness News reporter Sonia Rincon. In 2017, the Me Too movement empowered dozens of women to come forward and say Harvey Weinstein, as head of Miramax, abused his power and sexually abused or assaulted them or tried. But the criminal case here in Manhattan that resulted in his 2020 rape conviction was only about one victim. And even though that conviction was upheld on appeal in 2022, today's 4-3 decision overturned it, essentially saying the judge back then should not have allowed other accusers to testify. It's a constitutional right to tell your side of the story without having so much baggage from your whole life being put on display to a jury. Weinstein's lawyer, Arthur Idala acknowledged his client's reputation as the face of the Me Too movement as he praised the four to three ruling. It instills in us the faith that there is a justice system, even though there's a hundred cameras around, that a judge will sit in, in her chambers and look at the law and look at the precedent without fear of favor. A precedent, he says, that should have prevented other accusers from testifying at Weinstein's Manhattan trial that ended in his 2020 rape conviction. An attorney for several accusers calls today's decision a major step back in holding those accountable for acts of sexual violence, saying courts routinely admit evidence of other uncharged acts where they assist juries in understanding issues concerning the intent, MO, or scheme of the defendant. Actress Ashley Judd did not testify, but is one of many women who's accused Weinstein of aggressive, unwanted sexual advances. I was lucky I got out of that hotel room. The accuser in Weinstein's 2020 conviction was represented by attorney Gloria Alred, who says she's ready to testify again, but that today's ruling means fewer prosecutions will be brought against sexual predators and many will escape the justice they deserve. She says though victims have lost this battle, they have not lost the war. Judd calling today's decision an act of institutional betrayal. We need to work within and without the systems to start having what is known as institutional courage a spokesman for the Manhattan DA's office says it'll do everything in its power to retry the case. That means Weinstein will likely be brought from the upstate prison where he's been the last four years to be rearrested here, and he could be held at Rikers. He's got a prison sentence to serve in California, but only after this case is over. In Lower Manhattan, Sonia Rincon, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. So much to talk about, right? And so joining us now is more on this big subject, attorney and adjunct professor at John Jay, uh, Dmitry Shaknovich. Dmitry, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bill. Nice to see you again. Uh, tell me, just make sure I, I, I got your last name right, right? Shaknovich. Shaknovich. Okay, I, I, I thought I said that, but Shaknovich. But I will just call you Dmitry because I'd like to help you get Get, help break this down and you help our viewers understand what's going on. The question in so many people's minds, how did this happen? It's such an obvious case, it seemed. You know, these things are so rare, Bill. That's why it's so shocking. It's so rare to have a conviction overturned. Yeah. And in particular, it's so rare to have a conviction overturned on these grounds, right? We, as a society, the law, we give judges enormous latitude, discretion to make these kinds of determinations. And so it's rare that you'll see a case overturned on appeal and certainly on grounds such as this. OK, so lots of questions based on just what you said, your wealth of information you just got there. First, uh, would, it, would he have been found guilty if they hadn't used those other women who weren't his victims? That's the argument, right? Yeah. The argument is that the judge's rulings prejudiced Harvey Weinstein to such a degree that had those erroneous rulings not been issued, the verdict may have been different. And that is the justification behind the reversal by the appellate division. Do you know, do you know, Dimitri, whether this came up in trial it, when it happened? It must have. In order for a case to go up on appeal, in order for an issue to go up on appeal, that issue must have been preserved. 
That's why, for example, if you ever see a trial on TV, lawyers make objections all the time, sometimes not only because they really believe that the evidence should or should not be admitted, but also to preserve that issue for appeal. Only then can you use what the source of the objection was to appeal to a higher court. Right. And as we heard in the story, I'm going to reiterate it uh, and what you said, this happens all the time. You have people who weren't the victims of the person who's been charged, but has been in cases like this to give insight and information. These are always tough issues because obviously the whole point of a trial is to fight for the truth. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that jurors don't focus on prior bad acts, right? That they don't only focus on prior bad act witnesses, Molino witnesses, they call them. The argument is that some of these acts were consistent with the charged crime, right? right? And therefore paint a picture and provide context to a jury. In every trial in New York, or in many trials, I should say, there are prior bad acts yeah. in the defendant's past. And the prosecution will try to get as many of those in as possible, and the defense will do the opposite. Okay, final question, if I could, Dimitri. Uh, you know, he was, he's upstate New York. He's not going to be released from prison, right? We heard in Sonia's package that he's going to come back here and wait to see if the DA, Mr. Bri Mr. Briggs, is going to actually rebring charges again. What do you think is going to happen here? Well, if the DA can do so in good faith, then I certainly believe the DA will. There may be some restrictions in terms of timelines. Uh, we are now years past when the initial charges were brought perhaps some statute of limitations issues. But if the DA can bring the case in good faith, the, the DA will. The problem is now that the defense has insight into the prosecution's case, the witnesses, what the witnesses will say, and the DA will use, and rather the defense will use that to point out inconsistencies and prior inconsistent statements. So this was a good day for Harvey Weinstein in more ways than one. Yes. Professor, thank you for explaining it in lay terms that we can all understand. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. All right. Thank you, Dimitri. Now